We're going to see how fast I can beat the boss. The timer starts when I hit play for the first time, and it ends when we pop Lunarius's fifth tier. We booted up the game and headed straight into the tutorial. This normally takes two to three minutes, but there's a little trick where you can skip most of it by exiting to home after you place Quincy. So we got out of the tutorial only one minute into the run. Next, we just had to focus on getting as much experience as possible. We need to unlock tons of upgrades if we're going to take down the boss, and we also want to get as high of a level as possible so we can afford to pick up some monkey knowledge points. Instantly, we jumped into Monkey Meadow on hard. This was pretty scary as I wasn't sure if we'd have the firepower to beat the final few rounds, but it was worth a shot. Normally, we just take down easier medium, but the extra rounds that are in hard mode provide a ton of extra experience that we'd miss out on otherwise. To help with this, I started off the game by placing our hero in a super safe spot. This cleared the first wave and let us place down a dart monkey and then a boomerang. We put these two a little farther up the track, but still in decent spots to clean up any bloom that got by the first pass. It was at this point that we started unlocking upgrades for our monkeys. I had forgotten how much fun it is to see those green icons, as it's awesome to unlock new tiers for your monkey. So I tried to enjoy it as much as possible instead of only focusing on speed. With that in mind, we did have to balance waiting to unlock upgrades with the popping power they provide. You see, every time we go into the upgrade menu, the game pauses, wasting time. So we tried to wait until we needed the new upgrade to keep up our speed, and then we'd unlock two or three upgrades at once. This didn't always work, but it's what I was going for. At level 3, we unlocked the Bomb Shooter, which was the first monkey we put up front. This was mostly for the future leads that come on round 28, but it'll be nice for future rushes and Moab class balloons. I was excited to continue front-loading the track to speed up our run, but the early 20s made it clear that we couldn't get away with that. So we went back to Quincy's area and started placing down some boomerangs for more popping power and some dart monkeys for future camos, as we don't have a good way of dealing with those yet. This worked surprisingly well, and on round 30, we finally got enough experience to unlock our first tier 3 upgrade of the day, the Biotic Boomerang. This tier 3 will drastically increase our DPS and hopefully speed up the round. So we placed two new boomers up front, sold a few towers, and made them 0-3-2s. That way, they were strong against leads and moabs, while Quincy and his supporting cast of dart monkeys could handle the camo. Speaking of which, on round 36, we were able to unlock three upgrades for them, letting us make each dart monkey a 0-2-3 crossbow, making them much better, just in time for the camo whites coming on round 37. This was looking good Good, we just had two problems. The first was that any large rushes that get past our bionic boomers will surely leak, so we sold our towers and rearranged them a little bit. By Quincy, we now have two glaive ricochets that should handle any large groups of balloons, and we moved our crossbows up front to pop the camos right away. This worked great, even popping the round 40 Moab pretty easily, but it leads to our second problem. All of our money is spent on darts and boomers, meaning they're the only two getting experience. But if we're going to be Blunarius, we need tons of tier 5 upgrades, not just on these two monkeys. So the next focus was to spend tons of money on other towers, and so we started placing down snipers. This will be tricky as they're a pretty cheap tower, but we can start with three of them just to unlock their initial upgrades and make them somewhat useful. I didn't want to spend all of our money on them because we were still struggling from time to time, like with the camo ceramics in round 51, but we at least had enough money to spare for a few snipers. They quickly unlocked FMJ, making them a bit more useful, but what we really needed was extra camo detection. Every couple rounds, camos would just get so far, wasting time and even threatening leaking. Nothing would be worse than losing right now as we'd have to start completely over. Things got a lot easier outside of camos though, because our boomers unlocked the turbocharge upgrade, giving us an ability to 7x their attack speed and plus 1 damage for 10 seconds. This is a nice get out of jail free card if something is stronger than expected, but we still need more defenses. We continued getting sniper XP and slowly unlocking their upgrades, but the big unlock was for the dart monkey on round 67, where we finally got to make them all sharpshooters. This, plus having Quincy's level 10 ability, solves our camo problem. Round 75 through 80 though, are still looking scary with our current monkeys, but then the unlock of the run happened. On round 73, we got enough experience to unlock the boomers tier 5 upgrade in the perma charge. One of the best tier 5s in the game as it's so well rounded, especially for its price. So we saved up some money, and on round 75, we sold a bunch of our towers to be able to afford it. And just like that, we had the damage to beat Monkey Meadow on hard. For the final few rounds, we just placed down some wizards and snipers to get a nice bit of experience on them. But we were able to beat this difficulty from scratch, something I'd never done before. But with this win comes something great. 
we get to unlock an intermediate map which awards 10% more experience than beginner ones. Naturally, we used our one unlock to open up cards and darts, and we jump straight into hard mode now that we know we can take down this difficulty. 16 minutes into the run, and we're already starting our second hard mode game. Once again, we put Quincy in a safe spot to make sure he could pop everything, and then we followed this up with a couple snipers. This way, they could hit the strong balloons before Quincy and pop any that managed to get past his bow. Next, we started to place druids down at the start of the track. They have a surprising amount amount of damage in the early game because of how many thorns they throw, but this is a tower that I want a ton of experience on. We definitely need an Avatar of Wrath for the boss fight, but we also need the middle path druid of the jungle to speed up the rounds when grinding experience. We spent most of our money on druids and their upgrades, which allowed us to get his tier 3 up and running on round 25. This is the monkey that will really turn this into a speed run, as he has a global vine that one-shots ceramics and below, but it also leaves thorns on the track that pops balloons as they pass over it. So, it's a double whammy that helps out a ton in the mid game. At this time, we also unlock the banana farm, something that we'll be spamming in the Blunarius fight, so we need to get at least one of its tier 5 upgrades. We kept this guy around until 39, where we sold it to place down two bionic boomers to pop the Moab. These were just a one round rental though, as we sold them right after to give back our farm. Kind of a silly play, but we desperately need that farm XP. Now, you may also notice the tax shooters up front. These guys are crazy good at popping Moab class balloons once you get them to overdrives or the tax zone, so that's our goal. Plus, it'll be nice to have them for Blunarius, so it's a win-win. Fast forward to round 53, and we've made a few improvements. We just unlocked the banana bank for our farms, we have two Dragon's Breath wizards to pop most of the balloons, and we have a supply drop sniper. This gives us tons of global popping power on top of a nice bit of cash generation. Honestly, the only thing I'd change about him is the cross path, as the 042 is better, but it was fine for this run as we started off with 2 2 zeros. And from here, we kind of coasted to the end of the run. We got plenty of money from our banks, which allowed us to place down some single target snipers to pop the Moab class balloons. We started getting Alchemist experience as he's the best tower in the game, and we placed down tons of tax shooters to hopefully get the overdrive sometime soon. But this took down cards and darts before the 30 minute mark, awarding us the hard metal, 400 monkey money, and let us unlock an advanced map. I was between off the coast and cornfield as those are probably the two easiest ones, but we desperately needed some boat and sub XP, which made our choice very easy. Off the coast it is as we need that water. Plus, cornfield takes a long time to beat as you have to wait for the balloons to get all the way to your monkeys early. On. Here, we started off on medium because the map was much more difficult than the last two, but it awards 20% more experience than beginner maps, so I figured that was a decent trade off. We placed Quincy down right away and backed him up with a submarine as soon as we could. This took down the early rounds without leaking, and then we got a druid. Naturally, we rushed this guy to a druid of the jungle as we want that vine attack we talked about last game. Really, the only time that attack struggles is when we're on a map with more than one track, which we won't be doing too much of in this speedrun. Once we got this druid, we had to focus on towers that still need experience. The most important three are the Alchemist, Sub, and Buccaneer. So we spent some money on these three towers and continued popping away. It was nice that our druid was carrying so well because it allowed us to spend money on these new towers, getting them plenty of XP even though they're only tier ones or twos. Quickly, we had some hotshot bucks and an airburst dart submarine. This let us pop every balloon very quickly and we weren't even worried about round 40. Everything was surprisingly under control, especially once we got a Berserker Brew on round 39. This let us upgrade our bucks to merchantmen in the early 40s, making us some much needed cash as well as getting them more experience. We plan on boat farming during Blunarius as we won't have much monkey knowledge to lean on for the fight, so I really want to unlock the trade empire by the time we jump into the boss event as that can make us oodles of money even if we get a late start on it. We continued on, getting more and more boats and subs down. We had a submergent support for camo detection, several armor piercing darts for guaranteed damage, and a couple buccaneers of each path. This crushed all the way through round 60 where we got our medium badge for off the coast, 375 monkey money, and unlock the Dartling Gunner as we finally got our 500,000th pop. Next on the docket was Dark Castle. As much as I wanted to do hard, I didn't think it'd be easy enough with how few upgrades we have unlocked, so we went with medium. We started with Quincy, and once we could afford him, we got down a Dart Monkey. This beat the first several rounds and let us place a Buccaneer down in the castle's moat. We quickly picked up Grape Shot and worked our way towards a Ninja. We had a few upgrades unlocked on this guy, but we still weren't close to the big one that we need. Sticky Bomb. If we can get enough experience for this tier 4 upgrade, we'll be looking good for the first tier of Blunarius. Another tower that we need a ton of XP on is the one we just unlocked. 
the Dartling Gunner. Ideally, we get a couple of his tier 5 upgrades as they'll be helpful for tiers 2 through 5 of the boss fight, so we plopped one down at the top of the castle wall and had him shoot right down the center of the path, popping anything in his way. From here, things were simple. We got a sniper to make the leads easy, we made the boat a merchantman for extra income, and we spent some money on Dartling Gunner upgrades. But it was clear we didn't have enough damage for round 40 with these low tier towers. So we sold the buck and picked up a turbocharged ninja and a tax sprayer to deal with this guy, and we barely popped enough bloons to live through all the leaks. Pretty scary, but we moved on. That is, until round 43 ceramics absolutely absolutely blew past us, making us start over. This is a pretty big hit to our XP per hour as the later rounds give much more, but nothing we can't come back from. We'll just have to really push it later on. Our next run was almost exactly the same through round 40, but with one big change. We greeted a lot more getting the Merchantman earlier, and this made us lose on round 22. A huge mistake, but BTD6 gives you one free continue, which we used to save us tons of time. Pretty unfortunate, but it was definitely needed as we lost twice in a row. By round 40, we had the same setup, but this time included an alchemist and had the turbocharger's ability ready to go. These two changes absolutely smoked the Moab and not even a single balloon leak. And we had enough money and experience to pick up hydro rocket pods by 43, so the ceramics didn't stand a chance. We rode this momentum straight through the end of the run as we just upgraded our towers and picked up another ninja and two snipers to speed it up. And just like that, 55 and a half minutes into the run, we've beaten our first expert map. Now onto something I only know because of a previous boss speedrun. There's a quest called Keep Up With Biker Bones that awards 500 monkey money when completed, and it's a race, meaning we can do it in just a few minutes. This is important as we need a few thousand dollars to buy Benjamin, who will be the best hero for us when fighting Blunarius. All we did was start with a bomb and tack shooter and rush a druid of the jungle. I was afraid I sent too many rounds at first, but we were able to get this tier three druid with only legal a few balloons. From here, we just spammed the waves and upgraded our attack and bomb shooters. This lasted until round 36, where camos were a little scary, so we picked up a sharpshooter and double shot ninja, and we beat the quest in just over a minute real time. And with this, we were only 425 monkey money short of Benjamin. But then we did something crazy. Dark Castle on hard, even though we just lost to it twice on medium a half hour ago. This was pretty risky, but I knew we were getting low on time, and we really needed experience from 80 80 rounds of an expert map. Unsurprisingly, we started off with Quincy and then a dart monkey up front, and once we could afford it, a submarine at the start of the castle's lazy river. This is the start that I'm super familiar with, as in chimps, the easiest way to start this map is with a dart monkey and submarine, but hard is a little easier than chimps, so I took some liberties to place Quincy down first. We quickly made the submarine a 202 for those global airburst darts and then put down a ninja. There's just one problem. I totally forgot about leads, so we had to exit to home and load back in to retry round 28. And even then, we had to sell our dart monkey to afford an FMJ sniper up top. This wasted a few seconds, but it was definitely better than leaking. From here, we replaced the dart monkey and started working on an alchemist. Pretty soon, we had a berserker brew, blue and jitsu ninja, and a triple gun submarine, all in time for the round 40 Moab. Even with all this, it was pretty close. Nothing leaked, but several balloons did make it to the drawbridge, which I was not expecting. We purchased stronger stim on our elk for round 43, and then I remembered we still need tons of farm experience so we got two of them down bottom before going back to our defenses. We picked up a wall of fire wizard and replaced our sniper with a dartling gunner. We probably could have put the dartling above the sniper, but we don't really need any more sniper XP, so I was okay getting rid of this guy. Once he was up and running, we upgraded one of our farms to a bank so he'd be set for the end game, and then picked up a bionic boomer for some extra damage. This was nice, but there was one thing bothering me. We don't really need any more submarine XP, but we'd like a lot more on the buccaneer. So we sold the triple gun sub and replaced it with a hotshot destroyer and a merchantman. Not a bad trade if you ask me. On round 58, we collected our money, made our destroyer an aircraft carrier, and worked towards the second bank. We got this on round 61, and found out that we had enough farm experience to unlock central markets, which are very important to boat farming. But then, the dreaded round 63 came. We sold our bionic boomer and dart monkey to afford a more glaives boomerang. A hard counter to this round, but the track is so short that I was still worried. The three waves of ceramics can be deadly, especially with a setup like this. The first wave of ceramics was brutal, as six 61 balloons got through, bringing us down to 19 lives. Why I didn't use Quincy's level 3 ability here, I'm not sure, but we'll blame it on the fact that I was streaming. The second wave went off without a hitch as we used Quincy's Storm of Arrows, and then we spent the money from these pops on a Glaive Ricochet. This combined with Quincy's level 3 might be enough to take out the wave, but we must have been low on elk potions or something as quite a few balloons made it through, way more than how many lives we had left. Now we have a decision. 
Spend 400 monkey money on a continue as the next 20-ish rounds will give us tons of experience, or we could start over. We still need a bit of monkey money for Benjamin, but beating this difficulty will give us 800, which will cover his price if you include the monkey money we've been getting from leveling up. With that in mind, we used a continue and had enough money for a second more glaives, which smoked the round without a single leak. Now. I was pretty confident we'd win at this point, so we focused on XP once again. We picked up another aircraft carrier and then put four druids down bottom. We still need that Avatar of Wrath upgrade, but we're getting pretty close. And with this, we popped the ZOMG on round 80, giving us the hard metal for Dark Castle and the 800 monkey money that comes with it. This let us buy Benjamin and we're almost ready for the boss fight. Just one more win and we'll be good to go. We went back to off the coast to get a final bit of druid and boat XP. So we did the classic dart sub start and saved up for Oban. This leaked a few lives during the save up, but once Oban was down, we were in good hands. From here, we put a buck up front and a sniper in the back to help out, and this gave us the time and resources to prep for the mid game. We got down a very early farm and then a discount village and two druids next to Oban. And for camo detection, we just submerged our submarine as that is a great spot for him. Then we bought a destroyer and an alchemist for round 40. Overall, pretty standard stuff. But now it was time to get a banana bank and work on our druid. The goal is to get several Papuas all in range of Oban and both discount villages. This way, all the druids will be very cheap and have all the buffs on them that we need. We accomplished this for the most part by round 58, and on round 60, we found out we had enough experience to unlock the trade empire. Since we had enough experience on them now, we sold the bucks and got down more druids and a dartling gunner. The mad was looking a little out of reach at this point, which is terrible, but we got the Avatar of Wrath upgrade on round 67 and from here we coasted to victory we picked up another rocket storm and an overdrive but for the most part we just afk'd to the win after this run we looked through our monkeys and upgrades we had enough to unlock the banana research facility but we weren't even close to the mad and i just realized we never got down aces so we won't be getting a flying fortress this time around a little worried we equipped benjamin picked up eight monkey knowledge points and challenged blunarius to a battle on cubism we started off simple with just a dart monkey and saved up for ben we got him down in the middle of round six and we had only leaked three lives so far from here we got a tack shooter to help out our dart monkey and then we got down our first farm of the boss fight we quickly made it a 200 and went back to our defenses we upgraded the tack shooter to a 202 and worked towards a second farm which we got down on round 16. once again we made this guy a 200 so he would produce more bananas per round it's at this point that i'd pick up an engineer on my main account as his pin is very strong and we'd work towards a balloon trap but here with limited towers i just upgraded our tax shooter to a 203 and got down another farm my only plan was to make a ton of 200s and upgrade them to marketplaces when the time is right which happened to be around 28. we needed to sell one of our farms to have enough money to make a lead to gold alchemist for the lead balloons but this let me rearrange a bit and get four farms in range of a discount village and by the end of round 35 all of them were marketplaces not bad for a new account we got another one near the top pool and then worked towards a flavored trades buccaneer this way we could sell the marketplaces in his range for more money and adds a little bit of extra defense luckily we only had to sell one of these farms to afford a sticky bomb ninja and a more glaives boomer for the tier one boss fight this was popping him pretty slow but we could handle all the ceramics that blueberry spits out and we still had four marketplaces that were making us plenty of money every round so for once speed was not an issue we popped the first tier on round 44 right as he was about to make the first turn but now it was time to turn our efforts over to boat farming we sold the boomer ninja and all of our farms to afford a trade empire and a few merchantmen. I made sure to double discount them and we started packing them in the bottom pool. Obviously, the more boats we can fit the better, but the placement is pretty tight on this map if you want to get all 20 merchantmen down and max out the trade empire buff. This is all we did through round 51 where we managed to fit our 20th merchantman. We did take a bit of a time hit while placing these, but I figured the extra money we'd get from them was worth the slow placement. From here through round 58, we worked on upgrading our boats to flavor trades, but once we got super close to the tier 2 fight, we delayed our farming and started placing down druids we got six poplas in range of a village but we didn't have the money for an avatar of wrath without this upgrade we needed to up the damage so i purchased a sticky bomb ninja and a more glaives boomer and quickly it was clear we had the damage to pop them 
it wouldn't be fast but we definitely didn't need the avatar of wrath for this fight so we went back and upgraded the rest of our boats to flavor trades got down on rocket storms in hopes of making it a mad one day and started getting central markets each one of these increases how much money our boats make capping out at 10 so we needed to max out this buff as fast as possible after placing a couple down our defenses took down blue Nerys on round 65 which allowed us to sell most of them and speed up our central market adventure this took us until round 69 to place all 10 of them down but then we front loaded the track with overdrive normally not necessary but we're speed running this and i wanted to speed up the rounds as much as possible after this was done we went back to farming trying to fill the rest of the map with brf but that brings us to the tier 3 fight this time we managed to get our avatar of wrath in the middle of the map buffed by five poplas and a village and while blue Nerys was lumbering down the track into his range we upgraded the rest of our farms to brf now this might have been enough to win but if you've been to one of my streams you know i like to over defend and show the bloons who the real boss is so we upgraded our mib to a call to arms and buffed our avatar with a stronger stim and just in case the avatar didn't want to pop everything we got a glaive lord at the end of the track to make sure nothing leaked but this took Blunarius down after the first turn while this tier was easy it made it clear that we needed way more defenses for tiers four and five so once there was no more room to place banana farms we started placing snipers down in the open spaces almost all of them became 204 set to strong as they provide a ton of damage for how little space they take up and we were doing this while the rounds were going so we didn't waste any time placing them down fast forward to round 100 and we had 1.8 million dollars to spend i didn't take too much time here but we got 15 more snipers all set to strong to help out against this round 100 boss this did work especially when we activated the call to arms village but the scary thing wasn't Blunarius. It was the DDTs. You see, none of our snipers have camo detection, so it was up to everything else to pop them, and they were getting very far way too far for comfort to solve this we sold one of our boats up top and replaced it with a submerge and support submarine i figured we had enough money that we could cut one buck out to make sure a ddt didn't get through and make us start all over the other thing that was scary were the 10 zomgs that spawned with every skull all of our recent damage added was through snipers and they were all focusing on blue Naria, so our towers from the tier 3 fight had to handle all of these blimps meaning they were constantly getting over halfway through the track and threatening leaking but we managed to pop Lunaria and all of his children on round 104 but this was easily the furthest he had made it and his next tier has four times more health than this one but now we just had to make as much money as possible and fill the map with towers that can pop Lunarius and his 3 million health this brings us to round 120 and the final tier of Lunarius but before we hit play we sold every farm and had 4.5 million dollars to work with now this is a speed run but there's no way I was going to lose because of laziness or being rushed so we took the time to load the map with snipers villages and alchemists and then we filled the water with aircraft carriers this took about 10 minutes and over two million dollars but boy was it worth it even though blue Nerys had four times more health than the last year we could instantly see the damage we were doing normally we'd have two to three paragons instead of this mass of snipers but there was something nice about a paragon free boss run the one downside though was that there were so many monkeys damaging this guy that the game was running very slow this did hurt our time but it was nothing compared to how long it took me to place all these snipers i couldn't tell what was popping all the rainbow balloons that were constantly being spit out but i assume it was a mixture of the glaive lord and elite sniper but for the bad that spawns with every skull we just had our druids set to first to take those out but with the call to arms villages constantly active and over a hundred snipers we managed to pop the final tier of blunaris only two hours 18 minutes and 38 seconds after making this account and we have some cool stats in the speed run we played 11 games popped 1.7 million blooms placed 200 133 snipers and generated 7.2 million dollars but if you like this speedrun then you should check out this video where we black bordered monkey meadow as fast as we could